everybody. Welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh. I am Jacob Wolf. Welcome, hey. guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, man. Hey, man. What's up? How you doing? Oh, you know, uh, you know. before we get into everything, and I, I just want to take this time, uh, and I'm going to look straight into the camera when I do this. Um, today is a uh, a harder day for me and my family and my friends. Uh, five years ago today, we lost uh, one of the most kind and gentle souls that I've ever met. Um, undisputed raw talent. Um and unequivocally him all the time. Uh, I'm wearing the exact shirt he was wearing the last day we saw him. Yeah, you are. That's um, right. Like, this is the exact shirt he was wearing, not mm -hmm. like a replica. It is the one from him. Um, and I will never forget anything of it. So, Jackson Odell, I know you're listening. I know you can see me. Uh, I would give anything to listen to you play guitar live again in person and your laugh and... Uh, and anything, 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 and everything in between. Um, I love you so entirely much, brother. I miss you more than anything. Uh, and to anybody who is dealing with addiction, or a friend with addiction, or a family member with addiction, um, you're not alone. There is always someone out there for you. But for me, in my experience, and for others, sometimes your family member or best friend has a demon that they can't beat, and that's okay, you know. And so I celebrate his life and not his death. Um, and so once again, I love you, brother. Uh, and I'll see you again someday. Sorry what? to start it off on a, on an emotional note, but no, it's a, it's a, good. it's a, it's a big day for me. Yeah. I will tell you <laughs> what a true unicorn of a person, you yeah. know, even as like, even as a grown human, which I was when you guys were in high school, you were drawn to his energy, um, he he was also like no offense to any of you guys at 14 no 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 like, he was you were doofuses he was like he was he was homeschooled he graduated from stanford at 18 yo this like, dude straight up could have a conversation with you about anything, anything. in a very into except for maybe sports Oh, he was, I forgot to add that part. Quite possibly the most unathletic person yeah, I've ever met yeah, yeah, in my yeah, yeah. entire life. But, but watching but, him run in those boots and skinny jeans. Oh was so, my God. Oh, climbing thing. those rocks at Joshua Tree. Or Trude. trying to catch a football. Hilarious. Oh my God. But I will say you this. <laughs> if you got him a guitar. He could play you any song. It not just play you guys. Like here's to me the difference between a, t a like. He was an artist. So, so there is a guy, a guitar player named Joe Bonamosa, Bonarosa, one of the two. Google it. A G Google. You, he, could, you could say, hey, Siri. I, I don't feel it. <laughs> but, but if people listening will know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Massa, Bonarosa, Rasa, whatever. But it's Stevie Vai, you, who you wouldn't know. But a genius. Yo, your Uncle Sean was a genius technical, yeah. but, but no feel. You didn't feel any of the notes. You didn't, you were like, yeah, that's technically good, but that doesn't make me want to. Jackson was an artist. You felt every mm -hmm. note he played, every tune he hummed, you felt every word he sang. Yeah. And like, you know, um, when your mom had that party in the at the house for the Forever My Girl and he mm -hmm. came and sang enough mm -hmm. in the backyard it was chilling it was there were tears chilling in that backyard chilling and so if you guys get a chance and i don't know if jackson's music is anywhere i don't think so that's the thing is like if you knew him you knew how talented he was but if you didn't you i don't know if you'll ever get to experience the feeling he gave you when he performed even uh, when he was just singing in his living room i'll like, tell you something guys he he was a at the time 17 year old kid and he co-wrote the soundtrack for your mom's album. I'll tell you this. For her, by the way, for her feature film. Yeah. And I'll tell you this. And so, and this is no disrespect to Brett Boyette, who was the other co-writer. Also and the musical absolutely supervisor. outstanding. But, but Jackson and Brett had two different jobs. You know, Brett, that album doesn't get made with either one of them. But, 100%. but, um, but. Jackson brought the raw everything. And yeah. Brett, and not that Brett isn't talented and can't write, but Brett helped shape that. He brought he raw. brought the business side to it and yeah, like just and the, the, the couple extra years it, it on the planet. A great combination. Absolutely. And he was such a 
giving soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, Jackson was one of those kids also, people, who um, when you had their full attention, you felt like... Uh, uh, the most important person. In the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's uh, something just a little bit about him. I, I could probably talk for the rest of this podcast we about can, him. We can talk about as much as um, you want. Let me ask you this. Have, do you feel like you have done the proper morning for yourself do you feel like you have because um, i know you haven't done any therapy or anything like that but nope. do you feel like that's something that you need to i uh, uh, it takes time still for me like every year it, it gets what do you mean a, it takes time that's... like have i done the proper stuff for me this morning is that what you asked if t for you to process what's hap what happened to your best friend well that's that's what I'm still saying is like, it, it's still taking time for me to process what happened to my best friend. However, it was probably a year or so after it happened, maybe a little less. I was on a job. I was working production for uh, an art gallery that I was working on for some random reason. It was just one of those random calls where I was like, Oh, I need work. So short. And I, I get partnered up, partnered up with this guy. And on the, on the call sheet, it said Anthony. And I was like, I don't know who that is. And then, he showed up and I was like, your name's not Anthony. It's Twan. Like, I know who you are. Like we know each other through a buddy of mine, Dustin. Funny enough. This is his face on the shirt. Also D that's Dustin's that's, face. That's D time. Yeah. Yeah. So Dustin and I were friends and I met Twan through Dustin. Um, cause they were friends from high school and he shows up and I'm like, your name is not Anthony. He goes government name. I was like, ah, okay, great. And so we're talking and we're stuck in a truck together all day. And I'm for probably for two or three days. And Tuan is also a recovering uh, addict. He now helps kids uh, who are young kids, either uh, late teens or late high school who have problems. Uh, he helps them with their addiction. And he's now probably whew, close to a decade sober, something like that. Okay. And, you know, kudos to him. My man has turned his life around. He works out every day, looks after his body. He does, you know, he does it right, what he needs to do. And he actually knew Jackson. And I didn't know this because one day Jackson sent me uh, a photo from uh, a sober living house and it was Tuan in Dustin's merch. And I was like, how, I was like, how the, f where are you? Yeah. And he was like, we're in a sober living home. He just came to stop by to check on us to make sure we're good. And so I knew Tuan had knew him, but I knew Tuan also had known the darker side of him as well. And we were talking in the truck one day. I go, I assume you, you heard about Jack. He goes, yeah, I'm really sorry. I go, man, it's, it is what it is. And you know, I've been having a lot of trouble with, uh, and I still sometimes have struggles with, uh, I could have done more, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I, we didn't talk for a year and then it got worse and then it got better and then it ended. And I feel like in that year, sometimes I could have been doing something else that was progress to saving him. Mm -hmm. And I asked, I said that to him and I said, but I need to know a definitive answer. I go, I was like, do I, did I, anybody or me or anybody on this planet, have a chance at saving him. And Tuan looked me dead in the face and he said, I love you. And I know you loved him. And I know this may not help, but nobody had a chance at saving that. No. Kid. Well, except him. Oh, it's right. 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 But right, I mean, right. outside of him. Yeah. But that's the same for every addict. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. But so that for me, was like, that for me is what I think about when I'm doubting if I, what I did was right. Yeah. And so that is kind of what helps me get through it. It's like, for me, this is a situation where tough love is needed and I need to hear the things that my brain needs to hear so that I'm not tricking myself. I don't need a sugar. Like he, he didn't sugarcoat it for me. I was like, I need to know. Yeah. And he was like there. He was like, there was not anything nothing that could save this kid. That's a de that was a but demon I, I, that was just too strong for him. But I will tell you this. Wh <sighs> what was really particularly heartbreaking is outside of how much everybody loved him and how special of a person he was, mm -hmm. Jackson Odell did not want to die. Jackson Odell loved life. A hundred percent. But right? like, that's unfortunately, so this, this is like, it, we're not talking about an, ad, an addict who's like, I'm ready to kick the bucket or I'm ready. This is a dude who truly, because he hadn't done it for a while from what I understand. Well, from what I understand, it was something different. I don't want to get into the yeah, dirtiness right, right, of right. it, but there's, there's two sides to it. There's one side, which is what you, which is what I heard originally. And then there was a second story that came after. Uh, um, that doesn't matter. None of that matters, but, but, you're, yeah, but yeah. you're right. The, the, he, he wanted to live. He, he did love getting up every single day and he did love his 
family and he loved his people. Dude, and, and he loved his, he loved performing. He, and he loved, loved music. being alive. Mm. He lived very fast and, and, and consumed life. It's, it's part of the reason why I think he got to the point to where he did. Because there was, you know, there was one point he came over to the house when we were younger and he brought something over and I was like, I've never tried that before. And it was nothing out of this world. Yeah. It was, it was a bar. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I'll do half of one and we'll just see what happens. Like uh, talking about Zanny. Yes. Yep. I was like, yeah, well I'll try it. And from 8 PM to two, I don't remember a goddamn thing. Yeah. And I woke up the next morning and I was like, fuck that. That was not fun whatsoever. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's, it was like drinking, but I didn't even drink, but I'm still waking up with this yeah. headache and all this crap. Right. And he woke up and he said, Oh, I'm definitely doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so for me, it was like, he, he always said he didn't have an addictive personality, but are you kidding? Yeah. He like the fact that he woke up and the first thing he was like, kidding? I like that. And I was like, I didn't. Yeah. Good. We don't ever have to do that again. Well, uh, but but I think that's part of why he did get to where he did is because he was a part of living life while he can and 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 you know everybody does it different ways. I used to I used you know I still spend my money on shoes. That's me living my life, right? Or like you know going out with Amon or going to gamble now that we're in Vegas and it's so accessible, right? Accessible, accessible. Um, but so you know. I just think, you know, it just, it just got the best of him. His wanting to live life to the fullest and just wanting to try everything. Like, you know, how you want to go over the top of the mushrooms at a show on a Friday night. So you can see where your point is, right? Yeah. Yeah. He wanted to make sure when he got to it, he could check all his boxes, yep. but there were just different boxes. Yeah. Well, I, um, you know how much your mom and I loved him also. And, mm -hmm. um, if you met him, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's it. A, a true unicorn of a person yeah. to meet somebody like that at that age. Was, who, who was that? Like, I was like, this dude is like a 35 year old man. Yeah. 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 It was, it was pretty, it was pretty amazing. Yep. Jackson uh, Odell. We love you. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Dude. Well, and listen, and for those of you listening, I know this isn't going to make any sense, but this is next week. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. 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 So, so this is going to be, Released next week. Next week, yes. But yes. today was the anniversary. Correct. Today is the five year anniversary. But when you're listening to this, it'll or be, watching it'll this, be five years in a week. It's next week. Yeah, I will say though, like five years to me is, yeah, I I remember that day so vividly. Yeah, pretty crazy. Like it's so. Well, I remember this day so vividly, and then I I remember that that day of the funeral was like. Yeah, me too. It's like a movie. Yeah, it's so imprinted. But anywho, the, the funeral was lovely, man. It was like, yeah, it was one of the most surreal days of my, I said, when I got on stage, I was like, this is a surreal moment yeah. and not really in a good way. It's no. just kind of like, it's, it's like, it's like shocking that yeah. this is actually kind of happening. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I, I just wanted to start that off this podcast off that way because yeah. it's important for me. I get it, dude. I get it. And, and this is what this podcast should be is, is you and I talking about life and sometimes it's funny and sometimes life isn't funny. You yeah. know, sometimes it's okay to be vulnerable. That's right. Yeah. You know uh, he was, he was 20 years old when he passed. Um, and today he, or on July 2nd, he would have been 26. Yeah, man. So I'll, hopefully on that day as well, we'll be doing a podcast and you guys will hear another one of these. Like, yeah, because now I'm not saying hopefully you will definitely hear another one of these. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'll come up with a funny story to tell, I think. That'd be awesome. On his birthday, let's do you do a funny story. Yeah. Okay. Like, I can I can definitely think of something. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, I gotta tell you, other than the fact I still, that he, I still chuckle at watching him climbing those rocks and Joshua dude, Tree I just remember I'm like, yo, go for a pass. Like he would he would want to play football because he knew I was an, like I'm an athlete. Like yeah. that's just what I was. And you know, if Jack and I went to the same high school, I gotta be honest, he'd be with the theater kids and I'd be with the athletes. We we may not have ever met, right? But you would have met, dude. I think we would have met. We you were met, met. We were meant to meet. Yep. Um. But I remember we were at a park one day, and I was like, "Yo, I'll throw you the football. Go for a pass." And he starts running, and Hilarious. it's like, it's like, it's like a cartoon. It's like his feet and his shoes yeah. are too big for his yeah. body. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I've so seen he, him. So he run. would take him like yeah. big giant <laughs> steps. Like it was like he was wearing like size 14 yeah. clown shoes yeah. wherever he went. <laughs> And it never, like, he never yeah. looked graceful. He looked like a baby deer straight yeah. out the womb. 
And then you'd throw him the ball and he would jump up and do this. Yeah. And it was uh, so good. But I loved the confidence he had. Yeah. I'm cl- clipping it. That's, Are you that's, clipping yeah, it? Yeah, that's the hand for the clip. Do you want to clip this? No. Not sure? really. Yeah. You can't put my hand down from over there. All you can do is just want. Oh, my God. Did it hurt? <sighs> ah. It's telekinetic powers. You see that? Yeah, yeah. You see that? Can I tell? <laughs> I was like, get this man to stop. I have this crazy tendonitis, and I can't even really do anything with this arm. So those two flexes just ruined it. Damn it. Good job. <laughs> now, let me ask you, why do you hate me flexing so much? No, I don't hate it. I just know you do it to bug me. I do. So it's it's more just like playing a part, but I also know the fact that something like this is going to happen eventually, so... It's going to work in my favor. I also, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. What do you need? Tommy John surgery? I, oh, I need something. I need some cream. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Pause. <laughs> the, the, it might get extended. I might throw my head up a couple more times depending I, on what he decides to I, say next. Can I tell you what I love? <laughs> One of the things I love that happens on my, I think on every podcast is we say a word or something. It's not a word. It's a phrase. You say an uncomfortable phrase that can be interpreted in different ways. So I say pause because pause it uh, pause time out. Like you, yeah. That's a technical foul. Um, all right. Listen. Oh, by the way, everybody, um, a couple things I'm going to say right off the bat. Um, if you're in Vegas on any Monday night, I do a residency at Kimmel's Comedy Club. Um, come check it out. It is a ton of fun. It is a whole bunch of fun. Yo, last week's show. Hey, bro, hey, oh, hold on. Oh. I, I, no, no, I, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm agreeing to this. Okay. I, I, I went home and told the mom what happened. And I, I left out the very, very best part until the very end. Yeah. Do you want me to go ahead and tell I, what's I, happening? I'll tell my story and you tell yours. Do you think? So I, I, the dance off. So every now and then, guys, I do something called dance off. You've seen it, or you've seen the clips lie uh, on my YouTube channel. It's a ton of fun. It's super funny. I bring three people on stage. I have them do interpretive dance behind me. I play a song, and the winner this time got a hundred dollars, mm. and the second play, the runner up got a Willie Nelson Chia Pet. Well, if you won first place, you got your choice of either one. But you know, if I really thought someone was going to choose the Chia Pet over the hundred dollars. I, in, in hold on, in what world are you taking something that's worth twenty dollars in a over a straight hundred dollar bill? In a drunk world, in a drunk world, $100 a hundred dollars buys me more alcohol. Doesn't matter. In a drunk world, you're like, I'm taking the fucking Willie Nelson Chia Pet, but not the woman who won. So she wasn't in a drunk world. The person she was super high. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. The person who. So we had a couple of dudes hop on stage, and then this. There was a woman and her mom in the front row and it was the woman's birthday and her mom was with her and her mom was high on edibles. And I couldn't tell this from talking to him when they're sitting down in the front row, just talking, talking, talking. And so this woman volunteers her mom to come up on stage and I go, cool, mom, come up here. And she goes, you're going to have to help her up. She's blind. And I was like, what? Because she didn't have the blind, she didn't have glasses and she didn't have the blind eyes. You know what I'm talking about when I say blind eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. So I was like, oh, so we help her. Get, did you see her getting on stage? You mean when she almost fell twice? Oh. Uh, While she was being helped My still? God. It was like she was trying to fall backwards. Backwards? It looked like she was falling forwards. Uh, but maybe that was forwards. I don't know. It looked backwards. She's going this way. So we get her on stage. And I say to the daughter, I'm like, what are we going to do? I mean, I feel real weird having her up here. What if she falls off stage? And what does her daughter say? Just scoot her back a little bit. Scoot her to the back. Yo. And I said, what? I, I just, I love the fact that even the daughter was like, yeah, fuck it. She'll be all right. Just, <sighs> fix, just you know, she take just your precautions. Goes, just scoot her to the back. <laughs> so I'm like, you want me to scoot her to the back? So we scoot her to the back. We're on stage. And I look down at the table that the woman was sitting at with her mom. And I go, yo. I said, are those, are those your mom's nunchucks? <laughs> and she goes, what? I go, are those your mom's, n-? she has nunchucks? And she goes, that's her cane. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you put that together? Because she didn't seem blind to me. But even after she said she was blind, yeah, you still made, thought she had a walking, like not walking cane, but nunchucks? It made, listen, listen, in the moment, 
I got caught up in that they looked like nunchucks. Now that I have time to think about it, obviously. But guess who won the dance off? Well, I know I was there. I know who won the yeah, dance off. The the and she was a seventy one year old blonde blind woman who was high, super high, and on edibles, there with her daughter, and doing tequila shots. And she won because she mimed putting something in her butthole. That is true. She did win. It. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, but here's the thing. I Yo. will say, getting up there, I already feel like she she was going to win. No matter what she did, I felt Come like on, she dude. was the winner. She was going to win just being a 71 year old woman getting up there. But add blind in there and high and high and with her kid and, and taking shots and the fact that her daughter screamed, "Just scoot her to the back!" And she just kind of shrugged. She was like, "Yeah, I'll be fine." Oh my! But you know God. what was the best part about that? So when you interviewed that first guy, right? You, you uh, I think Joey. his name is Joey, right? Yeah. So you interviewed Joey. Shout out Joey because I know he may possibly be listening. Yeah, dude, uh, that's right. Because he came up to us and said, "Hey, to us after the show." And, and it was Joey and PJ. Correct, PJ, yeah, who was yeah, in yeah. the all pink. By the way, I knew he was going to be a sleeper when he danced because he was matching the color shirt with the yeah, hat. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 he was yeah. in. I knew he was doing well. But when after Joey had passed the mic off, you were you were like, "All right, go ahead and hand her the mic," and he just put it out there in front of her, and she just didn't move. And, I, and then he just like. And then he just kind of gasped and grabbed her hand and put the mic in it. And then he like almost walked off stage and put his head in his hands. That made me laugh. You know what made me laugh? Because it was like it was like he tried to give a he was like he tried to give a high five to a kid who didn't have a hand. Like <laughs> you know, you were like hot hop top, and he was like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> you know what made me laugh? Um, she and I did a tequila shot together, and I go, give me, go ahead and hand me that cup, and I'll throw it away. And she handed it to me, but she, her hand kept moving. <laughs> And I was chasing it around. <laughs> and I feel yeah. like, you know what I kept hearing? Da, 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 yeah. Da. I feel like going, Judy, keep your fucking hands still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, she shout was out, doing this shout to out me. Judy, though. Fucking man. huge shout fucking, out, Judy. What a great, what a great pop up at the show. But that was awesome. That. Woo. So, guys, if you're here on Mondays, that show is really starting to figure out what it is. I really think the dance off should be an essential part of the show. I, it. Listen, man, I'm, I've been doing this live stand-up thing for a minute. I can judge the crowds that'll do it and do it well. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes it's just not going to work with that crowd. That's true. That's, that's um, fair. But in general, with my crowds... They like they come to have fun. So they come I think to have you're going to do... They come to have fun. I think you're going to do all everything. Yeah. We it, should it, bring the dance off back more on tour. I'm not going to lie. You want to? You want to do like it in Columbus? We I, feel like, I feel like for the Mushroom Show in Columbus, you should be doing it. Friday night late. Jesus. Okay. I think so. Should we change the song that they dance to? I think you gotta uh, I th I think you should add I think it's a little short. I think you should just play another like sing another three or four lines. Because how we usually do it because is Because I love the song. The right. song is perfect. Right, but how we usually and the, the song is um Well don't ruin it. People can prepare for it if they come to the show. Prepare. Prepare. Um yeah, but they, they watch it online, they know what it is. Yeah, okay, that's fair. So it's um I Want It That Way by Backstreet Boys. And so it on purpose it's a song that you can't really dance to. Right, right, right. But you should be able to interpret the lyrics. Right. So I need if anybody has any ideas, it should be kind of slow and something that's hard to dance to. But um I usually what we do is we have them each dance to one verse, remember? Right. And then we vote one person off and then the two people go head to head. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's remember in Arizona? No. You don't remember in Arizona where that dude was there with his second wife and his second husband? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. There was four of them at that table. Yo, if you haven't seen that clip, it is... I forgot about that. ...fucking amazing. And then that older married couple where that dude with huge hands and his wife was just like, he fucks. Yeah, oh, yeah. That and dude we did have like, giant what? hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. But so, I think maybe we will. You want to do it in Columbus? I think so. I think we should. It's been a while since we've done it on tour. Are you just going to remind me? I will. Because my shows go long enough as it is. Right. But if you're doing one for the Friday Night Late, it's already going to go long. So instead of you rambling for two hours, we'll just take part of that out and have you do an answer. Do you think I ramble? You came backstage Friday Night Late in Miami and said, hey, if I start to ramble, come out and get me. Yeah, but di I, did I? I, I mean, feel like I, I keep it I up. feel like you when you see yourself rambling, you're still competent enough to catch yourself. Yeah. And you can switch it back real quick. But there are some times where you just talk. Yeah. And talk. Yeah. And talk. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you know, there are some times where there, there, there does need to be a little 
cane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little fucking hook. <laughs> just, or like something. Like I think from now on I'm just gonna come back and just or come to stage and throw something at you and leave. Um and just make you that'll be your alarm. Instead of you getting a light, it's just gonna be me throwing something at you. I don't want you to do that. Um we're gonna, I, uh, we're gonna see how well it works this weekend. Or next weekend. Couple or two thing, weekends? Two uh, this week this is next week. So next week. the week after. Yeah. So next week we're gonna be in Columbus, everybody. Twenty fourth, twenty fifth, twenty sixth. Uh, I thought it was twenty second, twenty third, twenty fourth. Lonely is the night because I have a DMV appointment Wednesday the twenty first. Wait, I set a DMV. Didn't we set one for you? No, that was a TSA. Did you go? Completely forgot about it. <laughs> that was this, that was that was supposed to be Monday, right? Twenty second, twenty third, twenty fourth is right. That was right. Um, lonely is. I'm sorry. So you. I you, completely forgot we set that up because I didn't get a reminder for it. It just was like, hey. <sighs> yeah. Oh, well, let's set one up. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait a second. Where is the... Oh, okay. Yeah, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Okay. Um, okay, so listen. Let's. I want to talk about two things. One, please tell me about your claw date. And two, oh. two pick one of the three things that we talked about in the car. We can go snack if you want. Oh, oh, one of the, or we can go berry or whatever. I, I think, I think the build a fruit is a really good one, but we'll, we'll get into that. Okay. Um, so here in Vegas, there is, um, these awesome claw machine shops. Can I say something real quick? Before? Sure. So what I do like that Jacob's been doing with his girlfriend is once a week, you guys just go do something new. Yeah. That Vegas has to offer and it has a ton. So much. Oh my yeah. good Lord. But so yeah, we're, we're trying to try something new every week. Um, and so this week, a TikTok sensation popped up, and it was just an arcade of claw machine games. So it's just a bunch of stuffed animals and plushies in like 10 or 12 different claw machines. You go in. And just 12 in the whole place? Oh, the place is actually surprisingly small. But by the, I will tell you this. By the time we had walked in, and by the time like there was a group of people in there, and then by the time we had left, there was not a single person that was in there from when we had walked in. Really? But it was still just as full. So it's just, uh, by the way, great, great the turnover is probably pretty quick. Great business. Also, because you lose your coins so fast because right. Right, you know right, how right. claw machine games work, right? Yeah. It's so, look, it's What's so, the best thing you've ever won? The, well, there's a gambling one in casinos that's a claw machine game. Yeah. And you have to pick up a ball. But that one's bullshit because when you go to pick up the ball, it doesn't actually squeeze on the bottom. And yeah. it's, it's pretty much, you just have to hopefully get lucky. Um, I won 50 bucks out of one of those. All right. Um, but this one was just plushies. So then you could also, they gave you a ginormous bag that was pretty much the size of my girlfriend I'm on. And she put it on her back and you fill it with plushies. And then you can trade them in for like bags or bigger plushies. How much or does it things. cost to play each game? So it's it's $1 a token. Yeah. And so $10 is 10 tokens. I think it's like $20 is 23 tokens. And then $50 is 65 tokens. So we went, we went all out. And we were there for probably 45 minutes. Six, and, so you got 65 tokens. Oh, brother, three times over. You got 195 tokens. Maybe more. But yeah, like you spent no, so yeah, 50, so see, 50, 50. And then 20. One more time. And then 20. Okay. Yeah. So, but think about it. We were there for an hour and we spent almost $200. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. It was, it was so fast. But we did win a bunch of things that we liked. Where'd you win? Uh, we won a couple. Uh, my girlfriend is, is obsessed with Disney, but also mainly Stitch because we have a living experiment 626 at our house, which is my dog, Milo. Mm -hmm. um, like, legit. He is... If I had yeah. to pick a Disney character for my dog, it's Stitch. Yeah, it's I agree. perfect. Yeah. Like, it's the perfect comparison. It's Stitch uh, with rabies. Which is Stitch. Stitch foams at the mouth at the beginning of the movie. Okay. It's Stitch. Stitch yeah. is aggressive towards the people he doesn't like and even towards his family members, but every now and then he's like, oh, this is my family. Do, right? the, do the Stitch voice. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's pretty good, it's dude. It's not bad. I've been yeah. doing it since I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, Ohana means family, and family means nobody gets left behind. Wow. I actually have a pretty good Stitch impersonation. Is that your best impersonation? Uh, it might be. I, I forgot how good my Stitch was, actually. Do you do it's, any other ones? Mm, you do your you do Droopy Dog. <laughs> I just love seeing, I like seeing your face because of how your tongue it is really pressed. It really makes me mad. <laughs> yeah, that one's pretty good. Hey. That one makes me laugh. Hey, Jacob. Um, hey, Jacob. Hey, Jacob. Hey, Jacob. 
Hey, Jacob. No. Do you do any other pissing? Yeah, okay, let's. Uh, it's like you have the mumps in your tongue. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> You could? Holy shit. Clip it. <laughs> I think my brain just broke yeah, for a second. You just had a stroke. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> what just happened? What just happened? Yeah, it's just nothing really else think, was coming out. I really think yeah. it was one of those <laughs> it was one of those too much energy moments where you just had to let a demon out for a second. Yeah, yeah. That was unfortunate. Yeah. I think. Um but yeah, I think Stitch is. I don't do a lot of impersonations, but I think Stitch is definitely, Stitch is definitely up top there. Um, but so we won like some Stitch plushies or like a little like a character dressed in a Stitch onesie okay. or just like what everyone wants to know right off the bat. How many plushies did you win? Oh, 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 that's a good one. Um, how many did we keep or how many did we win? How many did you win? Because they also had a prize ball where you could trade like a certain amount. No, so Let's I'm, answer I'm, question I'm number just, one. I'm just explaining it yep. to the people yep. in case they want to go. Yep. Um, close to twenty, probably. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not because a great, of, not a great conversion how big rate. Is a plushie depends on the size. Like some of them are little round balls. Some of them are like the size but, of my phone. But if you go to a store, they're eight dollars. Yeah, but think about it. I spent on twenty of them. This is what I'm saying. Like two hundred bucks. Right. So you you almost equaled it out. Yeah. Because twenty times ten is eight two hundred is one hundred and sixty yeah. times ten is yeah, yeah yeah so yeah we we did pretty well but it was fun and so we traded some things in for what uh there was a backpack that she wanted actually there was two there was one backpack that was like this cute little character she was like an emo like I would describe as like an emo like a emo pretty girl mm -hmm. which makes me laugh uh, and then she got a monsters Inc. so it's Sully as the backpack but then he's like baby Bjorning Michael Zowski yeah and Michael Zowski is the pocket to the back it's a good one so we like that one yeah um. And then we got Milo some things because he loves Stitch, so we brought him back some Stitch plushies. Milo's your dog. My, I already said that earlier, okay. so that's why I'd, I didn't want to, thought I'd, you know, re-clarify. Yep, Are yep. you crying? Am I? Looks like it. Maybe just from laughing. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. That's right. um, what, what, what do you think would have teared me up just in case I had been crying? What, what would have been weird if I had been crying? No, it wouldn't have been weird that you've been crying. I was just asking, like... No, but it would have been weird if I had been crying at the conversation we're having. Yeah, well, I, I, maybe a thought popped into your head about anything. Maybe it would have been, like... Because we were just talking about Jackson. Or, okay. I don't know. Yeah, maybe yeah. something else. Yep. Um, but, yeah, it was it was really fun. Um, oh, and also how... Because this is going to air next week. Remember how last week we talked about we always look for a, a good, like, Chinese or Indian place, but it has to have a certain, like... Authenticity? Yeah. Yeah. There is one right next to the claw machine place... And we drove by it, and there was families, and plural families, of actual, like, legit Indian people waiting outside. That's the one we want. That's where we're going. I think it's called Marigolds. What's the name and of I can't the wait. claw place? The Claw. Great. Pretty self-explanatory. The Claw was in the first Toy Story, too, right? Yes. It was also in an Ed, Ed, and Eddie uh, episode. Yo, dude. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. <sighs> top, top notch, like... But by, by the way, that whole Cartoon Network era show, that generation, you were young, dude. Ed, Ed and Eddie is top tier. But but that when we would watch Ed, Ed and Eddie, Cat Dog, Hey Arnold. Ed, Ed and Eddie's a little past it. No, dude. Same time. I can maybe, maybe it was towards the end of Hey Arnold. Ed, Ed and Eddie, Cat Dog, Hey Arnold. There was one other one that we watched. Codem Kids Next Door. That no. was a little older. No. I love that show. Uh, Rocco was around there. Rocco's Modern Life. No, I remember Rocco's. Ren and but Stimpy? What was the other one? No, that we watched SpongeBob? with Hey Arnold. SpongeBob Rocket was at, Power. We did watch Rocket <laughs> Power. Yep. You didn't do it. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, you're supposed to do it like the, this oh. is the handshake. Yeah, dude. That, but Rocket Power was Nickelodeon. So was Hey Arnold. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. You're talking about Cartoon Network shows? Uh, but that whole... Because Ed, Ed and Eddie is Cartoon Network. Yes. Okay. There was that, but that was a cool generation. That was a cool time for Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends because Ed, 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 Ed I didn't went, watch a lot of that. Ed, Ed, Nettie went a little longer into like my middle school years too. So there were times where Ed, Ed, Nettie had also mixed with a later generation of cartoons. Did you like Cat Dog? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Courage the Cowardly Dog. Oh, great. What a weird ass cartoon that was. You know, they made a live action Courage. They did? Yeah. I didn't like it. It was too real. The show itself was already scary enough. It was a really bizarre show. Really strange. I never quite understood how that was a children's show. Or how it got made, really. It, it, the images were just so like, I'm like, this is a kid's show? No, there was some like legit plague-ish plague stuff that went on in that show. 
alien abductions, old curses, weird Egyptian tablets. So many old curses and tablets and shit like that. Like, like the you know what the weirdest episode though was the huh. flan episode. There was just that weird guy who was selling flan, and the flan was like hypnotizing the human race. Yeah, it and was it was so the weird. only time you really saw courage in like a cityscape because he somehow traveled across the desert. Yeah, and ended up in a city, and ended up at the flan factory, and he destroyed it on some like Mission Impossible shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was like, that was a really it, fun like show. if you think of the concept of that show, it doesn't make any sense. No, none. Like it's so no, like none. today in today's day and age, people would be like, "What the fuck is this?" But for some reason. 15 years ago, it was like, yo, love that show. Still love that show. Yeah, yeah. It, I, it was a great time for, for animated shows, for sure. They, it just Cartoons yeah. now are just booty, son. Are they? Yo, I'm telling you right now. You remember the original Teen Titans? Like the original Teen Titans yeah, cartoon? Yeah, yeah. Okay, they made a Teen Titans Go. And so they're all little like yeah, I saw, fucking popping sizes. Yeah. Oh, Teen, you got to go ahead and massacre yo, my boy. That, Teen that, Titans was legit. Yo, that OG Teen Titans. Yeah. Uh, that OG Teen Titans... Is hands down top five one of the best? Like I would call it adult animation because it kind of was, but it wasn't. Not adult animation, but not like, but not what do you, adult you consider animation. Like Archer's adult animation, yeah, but like his Family Guy, yeah, adult animation, yeah. But kids watch it, but it's adult animation. American Dad, Archer, King of the Hill, uh, uh, Family Guy. Uh, so if I did, if we did like Bob's your, Burgers. It, um, if we did like your your top five animated shows ever, cartoons included, cartoons are animated. But that's what I'm saying. Like not just adult animation. Okay, um, we'll do this and then we'll do the Build a Fruit. Okay, and I'll explain what the Build a Fruit is in a second. Um, top five animated shows ever. Should we go back back and forth? You want me to go first? Do you want to do a draft? So a draft would say if I pick it, you can't pick it. No. We don't okay. Need to do that. Um, no, no. Well, I think we should do the top five separately. Separately, okay. Yeah. And this is it. This is in no particular order. Okay. You want to go first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I, I'm throwing. Oh, oh, BoJack Horseman in there. Okay, that's animated. Yeah. Fucking that show. Is so of course. Good. Talked about it before on here. I don't need to do it again. Yep. That show is outstanding. Oh right, that's right. We're doing five. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to do it back and forth, and I forgot <laughs> that it was just me. Do you want to uh, go back no, and no, forth? No, no, no. I'm good. I'm okay. good. I'm good. Uh, I'm going BoJack Horseman. I'm going the original Teen Titans. Yeah. I'm going the original Scooby-Doo because um, I am yeah. a fucking big Scooby-Doo fan. That's yeah. who I, ba I base my goatee off of Shaggy. Yeah. Um, and I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, oh. I got to go... I got to go Family Guy. Yeah. American Dad's a close behind that, but I'm going to pick Family Guy just simply for nostalgia. Um, and then this one is kind of a wild card. I just said it about two minutes ago. Codename Kids Next Door. Really? <sighs> Yo, that, fi that, final really? Episode, that final episode of that show is a tear jerker. That, episode, that, that show is... By the way, outstanding. Before I do my five, can we just say I've been catching a lot of shit online... On the post about you crying at Endgame, and me being like, "How, how did you cry at Endgame?" and people are saying that I was heartless. Let me just say hey, this. Let me quick. just say this real quick. Let me just say this real quick. I'm not crazy, right? You're crying at Endgame because of Tony Stark, or because of a lot of different things. Like, like, wait, am I crazy for crying in Endgame? Uh, I can see how you could get emotional. You, but you were attached to those characters from the very beginning, two thousand and eight. Yo, I. Well, here's the thing. Before the movie came out, before Endgame came out, my me and my friends at the time did yeah. the chronological Marvel movie order. So yeah, we watched dude. all 23 of them in mm. the month leading up to Endgame. Ta can so you emotionally attached, I feel like is an understatement. Like <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like Do you want to guess the last movie I cried in? <sighs> and it gets me every time. When was Gone with the Wind made? <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> shit, I don't know. What were talkies a thing when you cried? Yeah, it like was a Charlie, like it Charlie was, Chaplin. It movies? was a talkie. Hold um, on, let me bounce my packs. Yeah, it was a talkie. I'm trying to think. Do you want me to give you a clue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anim I like these games. Animated. Oh, oh, oh! It's up for a hundred percent. You, I bet you, you cry every time you watch it. Every time. Yeah, I it do gets too, me within the first fifteen minutes. <laughs> every uh, fucking uh, hands down. time. Hands down, that that movie first fifteen minutes is like, yo, I don't even know what's coming next. Like, yeah, dude, it did, it could have ended, and I'd have watched it again. again <laughs> yeah, it could have just been a short, like a Disney short, no doubt, and no I doubt. am in for it. Yeah. Like, yeah, that thing is really, all right, it's a really good. You want my top five? 
Yeah, I'll take your top five. Wait. Oh, yeah, I did my top five. Yeah, go ahead. Scooby Doo. It's got to be in there. You know my Scooby Doo's in there. Well, well uh, we love it. I think you also have a crazy love for it because I loved it so much that you just got it engraved in your head. But also, it's. and Dude, it, it's iconic. You know, I was a kid before you were, right? Oh, that's right. It came out in the 80s. 60s? There you go. 60s. Yeah. Yeah. Early 70s, late 60s, I think. So I've been watching Scooby Doo. I'm really curious. Actually. Keep going. Way longer than you. So not, yes. as, not as invested though, because you didn't know did you didn't know Scooby Doo's full name is Scoobert Dubert Doo. That didn't come out until later. But I remember watching Scooby Doo with nope. the Harlem Globetrotters. I oh remember yeah, I remember Scooby that episode where they're in the swamp. Scooby yeah, Doo yeah. with Mr. T. Scooby That's Doo a with Bo Jackson. Too. Fuck you. Come on, Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo ski. When did Scoobert? Scooby Doo? So uh, I would go Scooby Doo. I would see these are these. These have. Do you want to guess what year it, it aired or what premiered? I would say sixty nine or seventy. Sixty nine. Yeah, you were born. Um, <clears throat> so I these are gonna be also because I think because you had a different era of cartoons also. It's not just that. I'm like I, the mine Jetsons? have like no. Flintstones. My, mine have like sentimental attachments also. Okay. He Man. That no. was my era. Uh, right, Be- your era. Beavis and Butthead. Ah, good Dude, He Man also my way before you my era. P uh, man. So Beavis and Butthead. Good one. So Scooby Doo, Beavis and Butthead. Family Guy. It just one so one of Seth MacFarlane's thing has to be up there, dude. And it, it, it pains me to choose Family Guy over The Simpsons, but I find Family Guy funnier. I would agree. It's just the jokes. And by the way, that's no bash on The Simpsons. No, dude. A- at all. Zero bash. One has a gu- one has a gazillion Emmys and one doesn't have any. My man, you know, <laughs> listen, when you are writing over 20 seasons of a show, it's not good. A- yes. Not everybody's going to like it, but it's good not for it's every- still there for a reason. You're going to hit on so many jokes. Yeah. It's just like, you know what? I so I used to tour with Larry the Cable guy, and we counted once. And I think he had something like 335 punchlines in his act. Jesus. It was insane. And How many so of them hit? I remember a friend of mine was like, I fucking, I'm not, I hate Larry the Cable Guy. I go, dude, you don't even know what you're talking about. I said, have you ever seen a show? And he's like, no, but I don't like it. Blah, blah, blah. I go, do me a favor. Go to the show. I said, if he only hits on 50% of his jokes, you're laughing 165 times. That... Is That's a fucking crazy conversion crazy, rate, by right? the way. That is so, so, so this dude outstanding. All right. Anyways, um, okay. So, so Scooby Doo, Scoobert, Scoobert, Dubert, Do. Yep. Scoobert, Dubert, Do. Beavis and Butthead. Beavis and Butthead. Family Guy. Family Guy. So, uh, for me, it's the sentimental part of it. it. Either brings me back to Hey Arnold or SpongeBob, because it was something that when I was when I was raising you guys by myself, mm-hmm. it was something that all four of us watched together. Right. But I think I will go with SpongeBob because I, so I remember watching the commercials for it. None of us knew what it was, but whenever he would, the commercial would come on and he'd go, Ooh, you all three of you would jump off the couch. And be, la, 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 la. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, and we had no uh, idea what that way, was. I still do. It's on Paramount plus. Yeah. Sometimes I catch myself watching SpongeBob. So for me, that SpongeBob number four. And then here's where it's either for me, Ren and Stimpy, good, or Animaniacs, also good. Animaniacs was so good. Animaniacs is really good. But Ren and Stimpy might have been the first one where I was like, "What are they saying?" Yeah, out there, loud? there was a couple. There's definitely a couple things in that show where it's dark, like, dude, dark. dark, but also like there's a couple that are they're just borderline. Crazy, like yeah. there's a couple things like that. That scene where Stimpy's the dumb one, right? Stimpy, you idiot! Great. So when Ren is cutting the piece of wood on Stimpy's back, but he's got it strapped to him, <laughs> so he's got like a strap-on saw, and he's pretty much f- fucking the piece of wood yeah, on Stimpy's back is so absurd. And then they're both just like sweating yeah. after it. <laughs> <laughs> and Stimpy lets out this crazy yell at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah, Ren's yeah. just like, woo. Yeah. Like, that is uh, uh, crazy I, that you could call that a, a kid show. I think Ren and Stimpy for me. Ren and Stimpy would, would be it for me. But, like. It's great. It's a great there choice. There are so many other great 
Yeah, this honorable is honorable mention Animaniacs for me. Honorable mention Rocco. Uh, honor, honorable mention Hey Arnold for sure. Yeah, for American me. Dad, Archer, King of the Hill. Um, King of the Hill, by the way, I got to say truthfully, underrated. Bobby. God dang it, Bobby. Yeah, that was pretty good. I sell propane and propane accessories. Like, um, uh, like for me, how, so you think it's underrated. underrated? Underrated. Underrated, for sure. I saw a guy at Ikea in a it, Dale shirt yesterday. I mean, I think it's pretty universally loved, but I would agree with you. It's not mentioned in the... It, it's yeah. not mentioned as much as the other ones. Like, King of the Hill... So that show Are is we so good. Any obvious ones? I mean, probably a lot. I mean, The Simpsons, uh, honorable yeah. mention, obviously. Um, I'm trying to think of all the other. Oh, uh, Teen Titans. I, I didn't put it in my top five, but like for sure, for sure. Really? Uh, not for the, me. The, not for you, but yeah. Yo, know, I got there was in 2021. They released an article saying there was going to be a season six. They were working on a season six of the original Teen Titans Go uh-huh. or Teen Titans, and it would tie back into the the Slade storyline and it I was supposed to be 2023 and I'm still here waiting and I never have never heard anything else about it but like you know the final episode for that show is it's not heartbreaking it's not heartwarming it is just eerie. Show? Teen Titans oh. like the last episode of that show of Teen Titans is straight just like Robin is pretty much who's the leader of the Teen Titans is fighting the ghost of his enemy from season one which is a guy named Slade right and it's legit. Like his, the rest of the Titans find Robin in the basement, literally just absolutely beaten to shambles by a figment of his imagination that was real in time. And it was beating the shit out of him. And Robin could never land a punch on him because he was never actually there. Right. And it was just so eerie. And uh, all of this, like, crazy fighting your dream anomaly and then it gets to the point where it's like there's wonder thunder and lightning and it's raining and he's inside in the basement looking at all the body parts of Slade and what he used to wear and the mask and it's like you almost think Robin is going to put on the mask and mm. be Slade like it's so it leaves you with so many questions but f- god damn it that show is so good oh also honorable mention Star Wars Clone Wars for animation the all one right. that F- Freddy, Freddy was in that one, for any of you Star Wars nerds out there, hey, that one's a f- Shout out to my, my buddy, Freddie Prince Jr. We miss you, dude. Also, because of Scooby-Doo. Yeah, fuck yeah. Shout out to... Yeah. Yo, that still for me is like... I'm going to say it here because I don't think I'll ever say it to his face, but I'll clip it and tag him. Also, shout out Best Day Brewing. Yo, th- this non-alcoholic beer... I've, I Yeah, you... I've never... Like, you were never a beer guy, but now I see... I come in some days and you're drinking... I was this non-alcoholic beer for fun. I was never a beer guy, not because I didn't like the taste. You didn't like getting drunk. You didn't like drinking. I, I'm not. I was never a guy who was like, I'm not gonna have one beer. I'll have eight, <laughs> but I don't understand one. Yeah. I'd rather have water. It tastes better than the beer. Yeah. But I do miss the cracking of the can, and it, it dude, it tastes exactly like. Beer. No, it does taste exactly yeah. like a beer. I will agree. But I, you know, I want to say this in a clip, and it's gonna start right here. Um, Freddie, I never got to tell you how much of a joy for me as a diehard Scooby Doo fan to tell you that the real life Freddie and Daphne got married, and that for me just makes my heart full. So that, like, that just for me, I remember meeting them, and I was like, wait, 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 wait. Well, they were married before. Right, right. But oh, okay. my point is like, it, for me, I, I remember I didn't know of Freddie until this, but I didn't really know, know of him until yeah. you started doing your stuff with him. And I didn't know he was married to Miss Sarah Michelle Geller before I met them. Yeah. So when I walked into the house and met them, I was like, wait, 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 wait. Are Freddie and Daphne married in real life? And you looked at me and you went, don't say that out loud. And I was like, why not? Why not? Why not? It's yeah. like, it's a big one for me. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Because they, they probably get that a lot. I, I wonder, and also, they're just characters. They're not actually who they are. I as do people. wonder sometimes with actors and actresses what Sorry. they're. I remember asking Sean Astin this. You know who Sean Astin is? His last name is Astin. That's all I got. Nope. Astin. No, you, I said it has ass oh, in it. Okay. That ass it took, just one S. Yeah. So Sean Astin was in Lord of the Rings. He was Frodo's buddy, Samwise. Oh, oh, okay. I know who he is. Then. So th- think about this. Sean Astin was in Lord of the Rings, Rudy, oh, and, yeah. and Goonies. Yeah. So I asked him. Oh, my God. And I, I like ask, acting, asking actors and actresses this. He could have ended his career on those three movies. Well, because it's, it, it's look, to be somebody in that business and be part of one movie 
that's entrenched in Americana, right? All three of those movies are so deeply entrenched in our, um, in, in the, like the country's zeitgeist of entertainment. Right, right, right. right. But I asked him, I said, um, which is the movie that people ask you about or come up and talk to you about the most? That's a really interesting question. I, but I'm always curious about that. I bet you for, for, for Sarah, it's Buffy. A hundred percent. I would think Buffy. so too. There, there's no doubt about it. I would think so as well. I would, I I'm curious and I'm going to ask because he's such a star Wars nerd. I feel like, or like a nerd in general. Sorry, not sorry, Freddie. Um, I feel like clone wars for as many seasons also has to be, I doubt, but also many it's such a people, vague, it's such a it's, niche reference. It's a voiceover. So I doubt many people are known for a voiceover. Okay. Um, so for him, I wonder which one it is. I, I'm actually going to ask him. We'll call him. But for Sean, do you want to guess which one it was? Uh, is it one of those three? Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm just on. making sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just, yeah I don't come know come his on. whole IMDb page. Yeah, those are the three you need to know. <sighs> well, I got to assume people ask him to do the truffle shuffle. That's not him. He, yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't that guy. He was the lead. Sean was the lead. No, I know Sean was the lead. Um, Goonies. It's got to be Lord of the Rings. Goonies, Rudy, it's Lord got, of the Rings. It's got to be Lord of the Rings. Tell me why you think it's Lord of the Rings. He was in three of them. Trilogy-wise, like that. I guess that movie also is such a certain demographic. But I, I feel like the demographic is growing for people who like sci-fi and that kind of stuff. Like, I think Lord of the Rings pushed out of the demographic of just sci-fi. Right, but that's what yeah. I'm saying. Is that like it, reached, it reached even further. Google how much <clears throat> those three movies did at the box office. All together, it's got to be close to a billion dollars. It has to be three of them. I would guess it's over a billion dollars. How much did Lord of the Rings trilogy? Because it, it, international, also, yeah, it's got to be. I would. I'm gonna guess like one. Oh, po- I'm gonna guess. Jesus, I'm gonna guess one point seven billion. Okay, the budget for all three films to make was two hundred and eighty-one million, which. Actually, seems like a little low than I would think. I thought it would be more. Super low, but you know what they did? They shot them all at the same time. Mm-hmm. That was a smart move, right? right? So they didn't have to keep bringing people out there, and they didn't have the Harry Potter problem where you're like, hey, this 74-year-old guy is playing a high school student? Yeah, interesting. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> the total three films in the box office made a whopping $2.993 billion. They almost made a billion dollars a movie, dude. They almost made a billion dollars a movie. That is an absurd Yozers. number. Now, you know me. I am a Lord of the Rings freak. Dude, the books made $2.25 billion. Well, I read the books growing up over and over again. The books and The Hobbit. Like, I, 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 you know me, dude. Anything that has a dragon in it, I'm watching. Game of Thrones. I'm watching. If you have a dragon it. in your movie or your TV show, I'm fucking watching. Game of Thrones is probably, the, might, might be the greatest show of all time. Just want to put that out there. Okay. Uh, we can have a, uh, a discussion about okay. it, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, we don't think we have time for that. No. Uh, but I do want to do one thing before we leave. Hold on one second. Okay. What, what were we, so you so you think it was Lord of the Rings? Uh, it's either Lord of the Rings or Goonies. But I feel like, because I'm thinking those two, it's going to be Rudy. Which one is it? I mean, think about all three, right? It depends. Rudy is like the one sports movie that I think people go back, feel the dreams, maybe... But I think people watch Rudy. I think even like, I don't know if Angels not, but, but I don't know if non sports fans are watching Rudy. I don't think Angels in the Outfield is something people are going back. Why to not? Watch. Mm, good movie. Yeah, but different. <laughs> different. <laughs> what about uh? What about that? Um, okay. What about that one? That Samuel L. Jackson's the coach. Um, fuck. He's a high school basketball coach. Mister Carter. Is it that one? Dude, you talking about Hoosiers? No. You talking about Mr. Carter? Is it Mr. Carter? Nobody's going back and watching Mr. Carter. Says who? It says the the millions of people who didn't go see it the fucking first time it came out. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Mr. Carter? Mr. Carter? Google Mr. Carter's box office. I'm Googling the greatest sports movies of all time. Google Mr. Carter's box office. Greatest sports movies of all time. Okay, ready? Let me see if they're... Feel the dreams. Uh... Rudy, well, I don't know how they how they decide greatest sports movie of all time. Uh, it grossed two hundred eighty four million. Mister Carter did. 
At the box office. Holy shit. That's that's about $283 million more than I thought it However, did. resulting in a $200 million write-down for Disney, becoming one of the biggest box office bombs in history. There you go. Thank with you. a total cost of $350 million, including an estimated production budget of $263 million, it was one of the most expensive films ever made. Let, let, before, <coughs> before I Wait, forget. Wait, that, that had a budget of... Before six hundred over six hundred million dollars, yeah, dude. Before I forget, before I forget, before I forget, because <gasps> I meant, before I forget. So because people are listening, so Sean said that the the movie no that, yeah 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 the movie that people talk to him most about is Goonies. He said because no matter what, you watch Goonies as a kid, and then you have your kids watch Goonies. Yeah, that's the one. Like yeah. you might have watched Rudy growing up. You're not necessarily. I didn't make you watch Rudy, but we watch Goonies. That's true. We did one. I you have know. it. I have it on DVD. That's how much I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, but yeah, dodgeball has to be up there. Um, yes, sports movie. Dodgeball is a sport. Yes. Yeah, that's I, a loophole. It it's, it's a loophole. Yeah, but definitely. Uh, the Blind Side was pretty good. Um, yeah. Yeah, it won an Oscar, I think, didn't it? Yeah that that war, that movie Warrior with the Hardy Brothers. Fucking, not the Hardy Brothers, but. Those are wrestlers. And, and Hardy was in it. With the Hardy, the oh, Hardy yeah, that, Boys were was a movie that that bombed. The Hardy Brothers were wrestlers. Yes, and and Tom also, Hardy is an actor, and Ed Hardy is terrible clothing. Does Tom has a brother? But, but I'm pretty sure Tom has a twin. No, that was a movie. He what? doesn't actually have a brother. No, he played. They played. He played both twins. Nah. Yeah. Have I thought this whole entire time that Tom Hardy this had a brother? Is fucking amazing. <laughs> I clipped this. No fucking way. No, you, no, 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 so I, no, you I, the I, whole time you thought there were Tom Hardy and Ron Hardy. It was just Tom Hardy playing two different. <laughs> <laughs> huh? No shit. <laughs> This is an educational podcast, bro. It is. <laughs> I I always thought for some reason he had a twin. He did in the Maybe movie. Maybe from the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would make sense, actually. That would make sense. Um, All right. Well, right. well, there you go. Dude, this has been amazing. Yeah, great, great, great stuff, everybody. <laughs> um, uh, uh, do you want to now? Because we're basically, are we almost at an hour? Moneyball also. Moneyball, your mom, one of your mom's favorites, one of my favorites too. Five minutes. Also, bench warmers, Space Jam, Not, The Sandlot wasn't really a. Ah, you're calling dodgeball a sports movie, but not Sandlot. Sandlot's a sports. Oh, the wrestler with Mickey Rourke. Fucking good one. Great one. Um, yeah. Semi Pro with Will Ferrell. These are all. Most of these are loopholes, by the way. By the way, Semi Pro also not close to even top ten sports movie of all time. Tal- not- Talladega Nights. Oh God. <laughs> I knew I'd get you. With I know, that but one. it's so hard for me to call it a sports movie. Because first you're calling NASCAR a sport. <laughs> <laughs> Bad News Bears? Yeah, sports movie. Um uh, Miracle? Fuck yeah, sports movie. Southpaw? Loved it. Yeah. No, you didn't not, like that movie. I like that not movie. Not in my top ten. Not in my top ten, but I like it. Um sorry, before we go on, I just want to see if there's anything else I'm missing. Oh, Rocky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, there's so many good boxing movies. Yeah. Okay, before we go, I want to do one more thing. Uh, and my girlfriend, my lovely girlfriend, Amon, gave me this idea. We were super high last night. Let's promo our stuff, because I don't want people leaving after this great idea. Copy. Yeah. Um, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. We are, when you hear this, we will be in Columbus, Ohio the very next week. So Columbus, I'm pretty sure most of those tickets are going, going, going. So come see us. Come have some fun. Um, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. We're going to be in LA when this drops, doing some more podcasts. We yeah. can't wait to show you guys what we're doing and how many that we're going to be doing. Uh, I'm very excited for a couple of them. Um, but also in July, Tampa, we're going to be in New Jersey. We're going to see Joey Diaz. We're going to fly out a day early and see him. Great. I haven't seen Joe Diaz since. I uh, I'm going to go see him for and his daughter and, and, and hang out with him. Great. Um, but we got a bunch of check out comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Listen, guys. I already said that. I know. <laughs> Listen, guys. I know I say it every week, but let me just say it pretty directly. Yo, know, we are so grateful and humbled by you guys listening and watching to the podcast. But we can't grow this to where we want to without your help. And so, um, I know that you hear me say this every week, but we really like. 
we're trying to build a little community here and uh, we can't do it without the people in the community chiming in and telling other people to join the community. Yeah. And so if you know somebody who might enjoy this, if you know somebody who might enjoy the relationship that Jacob and I have, um, tell somebody, if you could please leave a review, um, do I check on iTunes? Yep. You know, he does. So I know he does for sure. If you could please leave a review guys, it just, I know it's kind of a pain in the ass and I know we're at a place now where if anything takes an extra two seconds, you're like, I'm not doing that. And I understand that. I understand it too. I'm not asking you to buy anything. I'm not asking you to join a mailing list. I'm not asking you to subscribe to anything. I'm just asking if you can do one of two things, turn somebody onto this podcast or just leave us a little review on iTunes. It would really, uh, it would really mean a lot. Uh, also, you know, we post a lot of clips, uh, weekly. So if one of these clips makes you laugh, uh, and you think somebody else may like it, send it to them, post it on your page, do whatever you want. Um, we just want to get the word out to as many people as we possibly can. Um, but yeah, as he said, very grateful. Uh, none of this would be possible without you guys, well, you know, and him. Um, but, but yes, thank you guys. So rate, subscribe, leave a comment, any of that good, I, I just good, good that. stuff. I know I'm just repeating. You repeated me already. So I'm repeating you. Um, but now I want to, I want to, uh, Drop something for you. Okay. So <clears throat> my girlfriend and I were getting high last night. Okay. And uh, we started talking. And she goes, all right, I got a what if question for you. I go, is it? I go, what kind of what if? She goes, no, not a what if, but like a hypothetical. If you could build a fruit. And when I say build a fruit, I mean these three things. The look of it, the texture of it, and the taste of it. What would you build? Okay. Do you want to hear mine first? Because I, I already did it. You've already thought about it? Yep. Okay. For me, it's going to look like a dragon fruit. Because I think dragon fruits are just... It's fucking cool. Bring up a picture of a dragon fruit. You've seen a dragon fruit. I know I have, but I need, does it have, is it spiky? It's the pink one with the spikes on it. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Yep. Um, dragon. No, fruit. I know what you're talking about. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Dragon fruit. It looks like a dragon fruit because I think it's the coolest looking fruit. Yeah. I just think it's awesome looking. They don't taste much like anything, but they're cool. Um, on the inside, I think I would like the texture to be a very, like a ripe watermelon, like a crisp, you know, when you bite into a crispy watermelon, like a piece of watermelon, it's got that crunch to it, but it's also just like really nice and, and soft texture wise. Yeah. That was, that was a question for you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's my texture. And if I had to have it taste like anything, I think I'm having it taste like a strawberry. I love it. I think that I would have mine basically be like an apple. I like the size. I would want it to be crisp like an apple. There's nothing I like more than a crisp yep. apple. I hate getting a... When I, if I bite into an apple and it's squishy, I throw it out. I'm so fucking mad. I throw it out. I oh, don't even dude. eat it. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. It if is it's, such a fuck you. If it's not crispy, I don't want it. Mm -mm. And I would want it to probably taste like combination of like gr grape. Not a grape, but grape. Like a grape flavor? Grape and watermelon. Mo leaning heavier into the watermelon because you know how much I like watermelon. Right, so that means the inside of the apple would be pink. Sure. Just like for the sake of just like thinking of what it would look or taste Sh like. Sure. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. I, I like apple size. I like apple crisps. But if you gave me watermelon with a tiny hint of grape, I, I am liking that a lot. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Do and you want to do, do one more before we get out of here or we got we to gotta go? I would call it a... A um, wa a water grapple. Sounds dirty. Water grapple. Um, and then really quick before we go, give me a give me a couple food red flags. Like that's someone. Like you want me to give you some? Like food red flag. If you put your milk in before your cereal, you're food a, red flag. You're a, you're a psycho. Yeah. Also, big one, big one. I know this is gonna be a clip, yo, because it's gonna target one of my friends. Hey, if you don't like any some sort of condiments, like at all, like everything you eat is dry. No ketchup, mustard, mayo, uh, a cane sauce, like a ranch, a blue cheese. Yo, you don't like any of those? That's big red flag. Yeah, for me. I just, there's so many options. How do you not like any of the sauces? Yeah, I, I th those are good ones. Uh, right off the bat, I can tell you ketchup on eggs and ketchup on steak. I'm punching you in the face. That's a good one, too. This is this especially ketchup on steak is straight up disrespectful. Uh, it's straight up disrespectful 100 it, it, it is a fuck you to somebody who made that steak yeah 
So I would say ketchup on eggs and ketchup on steak. And look, man, I, after that, I'm, there's so many people who put, pineapple on pizza, who put mayonnaise on things that, that where it's just not. I like mayo. What are we talking about? That I like not? it too, man, but it doesn't belong on a hot dog. I put it on a hot dog. You're wrong. One of those, I'm telling you right now, one of those bacon wrapped hot dogs that you get off the street car with must with no, no mustard with ketchup, mayo and onions. Wrong. Delicious. Wrong. No. Incorrect. Correct. White, white sauce on a pizza. We're fighting. Sometimes that's good. Nope. Never. I don't do it very often. It's anymore. not pizza. Don't call it pizza. Call it something else. Call it bread with white sauce. It's not pizza, man. Pizza doesn't have but a... Who, but, 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 yo, pizza, when it does it's like chicken but, with like a ranch but, white sauce. But who are you? Who are I'm you to fucking A. Hey, I'm who, Mr. Pizza. No, that's that's who I'm supposed to be, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, Who yeah, are you to decide what, what is pizza? You just asked me food red flags. Yeah, but did you red, not? Is this not flags, the game? But you can't say that it's not pizza if it's still it's pizza. It's not pizza. Pizza has red sauce, dude. Pizza has sauce, red sauce, cheese, it's red sauce, and it's in a crust. It's red sauce. It's still red got sauce. sauce and red cheese sauce. and red sometimes sauce. meat, but it still looks like red a pizza. Sauce. What, you, what would red you call sauce. it? What would you call it? Would you call it red sauce? It, it, you mean the pizza with the white sauce? Pizza. It, no, it's like bread with white sauce on it. That doesn't make any sense. White sauce and cheese. That was my nickname in high school. <laughs> 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 All right, cool. I just wanted to end it on a. I'm going to get you aggravated because I know we're going to talk about it more in the car off camera. He's going to be like, I fucking hate that shit. Um, thank did, you. Did everybody see that? Yeah, he's going to hurt himself oh, again. Shit. Oh, it's great timing. <laughs> <God. laughs> I just don't right. think the left arm's got. Oh, yeah, the left arm's not, not bad. Not bad. Terrible for it. <laughs> Oh, why did you flinch? I thought you were throwing a dart or something. <laughs> thank you guys again so much for being here. Um, we love you guys all so much. Uh, we will we will talk to you guys again shortly. See bus, we will see you soon. Um, and thank you guys again. If it wasn't for any of you, we wouldn't be in this position. So, let me just say, I we have this second. I'm calling it second season of what we're doing here. Oh, of Tusk. No, of this show that we cut that little break we co- had. We called first season. We're calling this second season. That's what I'm calling Tus- Tussle. No, this show. That we're oh, doing the podcast currently right now. There are seasons. You and I there are seasons to, each other. to this. The first season ended. We had a little break and we came back for a second season. What? What? When did the first season have a break? We didn't take a break from the podcast. Just like in general. Yeah. I mean, I guess. But are we calling it seasons? We already did. You did. Yep. Okay. I will I say confused. this. Though. I was like, what the fuck are we talking about? Lately, I just want to let you know, I'm, 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 I'm super. Proud of you. You are coming out of your, not that you were in a shell, but you're growing more and more every time we do this. Um, you know, one of my main goals for you, not just in the pod, but on the road Mm -hmm. is to develop a real sense of who you are, which Mm -hmm. is hard to do at your age. Um, especially with social media, because it's all about pretending and, putting out like who you want people to think you are, yeah. what your life is. But um, I want to let you I know that I'm proud of you. It's a process finding out who you are and what you do and how you like to be in the world. But um, you're doing a great job, dude. Thank you. Man. I appreciate it. Yeah. I love you. Love you too. Later. Love you guys.